you want to join as a patron, uh, you may do so. I am trying to encourage everyone to join as a dollar patron. Um, it's just the equivalent of me not shrinking my videos. Or I've been doing something where I've been like shrinking my videos into five minutes, but keeping the original one hour um, or one hour and a half length video um, still on, on, on my website, on my, on my page, on my channel. But I will never only submit five minute critiques. That's just crazy. Um, it's crazy business. What are you guys going to learn out of five minutes? Um, so if you appreciate these free lessons, if you appreciate and you want to give back, um, you appreciate the hours, you, you want to find a way to support the channel, you may do so. You only have to join as a dollar a month. If everyone on Reddit joined as a dollar, I really wouldn't need to constantly campaign for, uh, for this. Um, the, pr the, 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 the announcements for Patreon could come to an end. Uh, but we're trying to find a stable place where we will never need advertisements or de depend on monetization or work with YouTube's uh, evil little sign in blood here, uh, contracts uh, with marketing agencies or anything like that. So if you want to support the channel, keep the channel independent, uh, <laughs> donate to your local PBS station. I always know, I always have known ever since I was a kid that I would, I would do something like PBS. Um, and that's it. Uh, thank you guys for enduring these announcements every single time. Let's talk about this piece. Uh, something that, that I'm, I'm choosing this one um, because the the person who posted it said that it looks boring, and they wanna they wanna do something about it. The lighting looks wrong, all that stuff. Let's talk about all the major errors made here. Um, the reason it looks boring is because you chose a very basic bust. I mean, it's no, nothing's really happening that looks interesting when it comes to a photo. So, <clears throat> if you were to have, if you weren't painting, let's say you weren't painting and this was a girl you knew, and you just wanted to take a picture of her, if, you would be judged based off your photography, um, your angle, your lighting, what the character is doing, um, how they're, what the expression is. So if you were to separate the skill of executing the light on form, it's a separate skill. This is something I've been trying to do every critique hour, trying to show you where you're bad. I'm trying to show you how bad, where you did the bad, okay? So today's class, where I did the bad, it's in the light on form. That, you have issues with it. But I'm not going to say you're a bad photographer. Or I'm going to say, yeah, you're a fat, bad photographer, but only in photography. I'm not going to say... Um, uh, uh, you know, that you are totally, uh, uh, th these are all totally art related mistakes. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see the distinction I'm making? Uh, photography and visual art, light on form physics are completely different things. As a photographer, you failed, but as a photographer, um, that's where referencing comes in. That's how you make a better reference. That's how, so I'm not even going to change the model, I'm just going to just change the angle. Okay, I'm just going to change the angle of the bust. Oh, I, I don't think, I, I forgot, if, no, <laughs> this is not the posable one. Um, I will bring in the model, uh, just I just didn't want to deal with bringing in the model, but I'll bring in the model. I used to be able to control the neck, but we have to take that feature out. So as a photographer, if I was looking at this character, um, and I was trying to take a better picture, and she was this super flirtatious elf character. Alright, so I'm tilting the camera this way, I'm increasing the field of view. Zooming in just a touch. Okay, and I'm bringing that down, bringing that down. And let's see how she's put. So look at what I did. What did I just do? Can anyone describe it? I just forgot to turn it on, low latency. What did I just do to the reference? All right, so let's take a look. What just happened? I changed the angle. Let me turn off the joints. Um, hide joints. All right, so I changed the angle of the reference and then look at what's next. I can change the tilt of the head. So she's a, even a little bit more flirtace, flirtatious, flirtatious. And then she could be tilting her head this way. Look at that character. Alright, 
So now you said in your, when you submitted this to the Reddit community, you said the bust feels boring, the chest feels boring. So this is a great angle for boobs. This is a, this is the boob angle. Look down her shirt. <laughs> All right, when we're talking pinup, think the best angle you could come up with. That's the angle that you use. So right now, this is what was missing. It was bad photography. All right? That's why it was boring. Everything else, your bad lights, um... You know where so let's just change the angle of the light. I think you had shadows coming on this side so you had a slight little nose shadow all right yeah so that looks okay so it was just bad photography so we can keep the head tilted toward the camera as you had and yeah, we can keep that I mean you saw how it looked before how much more cool it looked when she does that and then Knowing that we could do this, we could easily make her eyes look in a different direction, look more flirtatiously towards the far left. It's just bad photography. So please remember that sometimes you guys think that because you're an artist, you are making all art-related mistakes. No. Sometimes you guys, when it comes to holding a camera, you just have no idea how to frame something. And so now there's even more stuff to learn. Watching a video or two about how to take a good photo will change how you draw a character. No duh. It seems like the most logical train of, of thinking. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I've been taking pictures of my drawings. Technically, they've all been pictures of the character. So have I really been taking the best picture of my character? Ask yourself that question. Uh, write that back to me. So this is a lot of perspective to try to do in one critique hour, but hell, I'm going to try. Um, my Photoshop is acting really, really ballistic. Um, I have no idea why. It was working just fine earlier. And then, and now the color layer, grayscales? Like, since when? I mean, am I doing something wrong here? I don't know. Um, we'll, 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 we'll figure it out when we get there. So, this means I have to cut off her head and try to address the perspective of the body all separately. So, when we pick up our reference, this is Portrait Studio by the way, if no one knows what it is, it's a reference uh, program that my team and I designed. You can buy it on my website. <clears throat> so, the key to this perspective is that the shoulder is just off. I'm sorry about the sound of, you see that sound, you hear that sound? That's my table. I'm sorry about that. It's just a really, really quick makeshift table just for me to use while um, renovations are under underway. So what I'm trying to do is just throw one shoulder off to the far end. Okay, and this means, so ignore what's happening in the boobs, this means that we're seeing more of the breast. So actually, I am going to take a picture. So you can take a screenshot, it saves directly to your desktop. And I'm going to just crop it so I can open it up. Okay. So a long time ago when I used to do critique hour, I used to just make the fixes, but not really talk about the distinction between a good photographer and a bad photographer and a good artist and a bad artist. So it's it's sometimes it's sometimes one one of them but sometimes all of that so for you it's both that's why the drawing is less of has less skill so if we were to rate your drawing I'm sorry it hurts to hear this it would be of less skill because and only because you made mistakes on both photography and light um, on form physics which means as an artist you also made mistakes so there's ways to remedy that you can reveal your full art skill by taking care of the photography end of things Okay, so I'm just doing a really, really, see, it's like a pretty simple perspective. I mean, all things considered, it's not a crazy advanced perspective. And I'm just blocking in all these major changes anyways. But the biggest thing is that there's no neck. You see how the neck is gone. That's a massive perspective marker. And I'm just blocking it in geometrically, trying to get the most dynamic angle. And we all, we are all pinup artists one way or another. We're all doing pinup. Um, it's, it's something that a lot of us don't realize. And because we're not realizing this, we don't know how to look up good pinup references. We don't know how to look up what it takes to be a good pinup artist or what is required for it to look better or 
what pinup art successful pinup artists are doing in order to pull off better pieces man they do a lot of research they take their own photos um, a lot goes into being a good pinup artist so I'm just using my reference here not freaking going on the picture viewer and then getting back that head and as you can see it's starting to look a little bit more dynamic and I'm just trying to again we're not seeing the neck anymore or where the, the neck is gone and you would not have picked that up without reference or at least some really really intensive sweat inducing uh, concentration with no reference trying to break break down the, the, the perspective alright so that looks a little bit more interesting we have the neck going this way so there's a lot more that you can do though a lot more that you can do to make this piece look better you can increase the size of the head that'll make it look like there's even more foreshortening involved okay and the fact that she's tilted backward means that we don't really see the other arm, so you could really throw that away and take advantage of this angle you have for the boobs. And you see how see how this is such a I love I love drawing this part because it's just such a simple so much perspective on two shades. Literally one shade, the shade beside it, a full edge in between and a and a, and a blend. But holy God, it's so much perspective all in one. It's just three basic shades, and I would not have known how to do that without a reference. Okay, so I'm just trying to find that center collarbone line. And then thinking about where the light is coming from. And then, of course, just completing what you were doing here with the hair. The head stays big, but there's a lot of it's it's acceptable to a degree to have a big bigger head. And don't try if you have a reference, don't try to invent your own shades. Just just do what's in the reference. So the head is slightly darker and the neck is slightly lighter just because of the lighting angle that we have here. And then the shadow happens afterward. Collarbone is in a completely new spot. The collarbone has light on the top, light in the front, shadow in the bottom, and then the cleavage is completely lopsided, or you can just relocate all of that cleavage and just place it right there. So already we have less of that really basic front view angle. We have something a little bit more dynamic, just slightly more dynamic, and it's increased the skill level or the photography that you're representing. And then, you know, there's all of that, and then there's the light on form physics, the actual errors of being an artist, the actual issues that you're dealing with. Um, those have to, we have to talk about. And if you're at a loss, I mean, I'm just giving her bigger and bigger boobs the more I paint. I don't even know why. Um, and if you're at a loss for what to do with your reference, or if you're not seeing your reference appropriate, like you can't really see what's happening in your zoom out, um, that will really, really help you. Okay, let's talk about the face. I like the way you did the eyes. I really do. So I'm going to save that. I do don't understand uh, why you would try a masterpiece if you have done maybe tops less than 20 or less than 10 three quarter views in your entire life as an artist. Those are rookie numbers and they're unacceptable. Um, and this is just my guess, just based off my expertise, what I've seen from my private students, from public classes, I, I don't think you've done a lot of three quarter views. And if you have, you really haven't learned much. Maybe you're stubborn with critique. I'm not sure you are posting on the community, so you're probably not that stubborn. But it's 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 a lot of mistakes you could have easily crossed off your list, and even more to be even more organized in my approach. Just like how I created the distinction between photography and being an artist and the mistakes within each realm, there are different mistakes that you're making that are in, from different realms of your brain with light on form physics. So you have 
basic stuff you could cross off your list. What, what is it? Stacking. Stacking is a concept because it, it's one object in front of the other in through quarter view. So we had three circles beside each other. Apply some perspective. They start to stack, right? One is behind the other. You didn't stack or you tried to and you kind of overdid it. One eye ended up being super hooded even though this eye is not hooded. Where did this hood come from? This little flap of skin, where did it come from? Right? It came from nowhere. And then you showed too much upper eyelid and not enough crease. So all we had to do was just get rid of the flap of the hooded eye and it's already looking better, looking more appropriate because now we have an uh, like a, an appropriate amount of compression in the stacking without new anatomy coming out of nowhere. And stacking is just pushing the eye back. That's all I did. I just pushed it back and into the face. And that was it. That was all you needed for the three-quarter view. And I know I make critiques look easy. I know I make paint overs look easy. It's not because I'm, I'm, I am versed in this stuff, but it's not, be that's not the only reason. It's because you can trust the rules can trust them to behave as they will always behave until the end of time. This is just the physics involved in head rotating in open space. The only reason art is hard is because it's hard to imagine things in 3D if you have not trained in that. Alright, so I'm going to do a little bit more for the expression. I'm going to raise the eyebrow up and I'm going to hide half of this eyebrow because I'm not sure why we would need it. Her head looks swollen. All right. And then I'm going to balance this corner. And let's talk about this eyeball. This eyeball is a ball. It's not an eye flat. It's an eyeball. It's not an eye circle. It's an eyeball. So that means a ball has volume. A ball sticks out. When it's seen through quarter view and you can see the volume, that volume will stick right out and hide the rest of the eye, but you put the waterline and wrapped it like an outline all the way around. That is anatomy. That relates directly back to your skill as an artist, which means, okay, hey, if as soon as Mr. Brack says, I have my skills as an artist are bad, okay, exactly, what is it? Because I'm never going to just say, oh, you're bad. I'm going to tell you how you're bad. Um, it's it's with three-quarter view rotation and stacking. That you need to you need to just jump right on that ASAP. Okay. What do you look up to learn framing and photography? Um a lot of it has to be active observation, but you can look up basic videos how to take a good selfie. Um good photography, best photography of 20 whatever. Um uh portraiture photography in National Geographic. How are they what's the angle? Like ask for these these questions. And then mostly the best resource, my personal resource is movies. Um, that's where you find the best because they're always related back to some kind of emotion, right? Because it's storytelling, it's movies. So it's, a, it's basically what we're doing. We're telling stories with our paintings. So that's where we go to find the best angles to apply to our drawings, to our illustrations, is movies. We all eventually want to work in that field or something similar to that field anyway. So why wouldn't it make sense to jump straight on to movies and find where these, um, where these are? best angles for a sad person, the best angles for a cute character. Uh, look up anime. I mean, anime is a great way to look up framing only um, because anime has this um, history of uh, emotive storytelling. It's got, uh, that's one thing they're really, really good at doing. Um, apart from all that cookie cutter crap, uh, a lot of the emotions and that are rep represented in anime are cookie cutter, which is one of my biggest pet peeves about anime is that it's all the characters go through the same five emotions in an episode or three episodes. It's kind of stupid in that way, but it's they're they're presented well. Um, so that's one one location, like one place to go. Um, then there's just uh, comic books, obviously manga. <clears throat> Anywhere where you're seeing storytelling, I guess is is a good uh, rule of thumb. I'm going to fade some of this eyebrow because I want the eyebrows to look like they're growing. You know, it's actual hair. The waterline is thick. That's a thick old waterline. And one way to express emotion, I was talking about this in my previous class, is to use the eye squint. The eye squint will make her look a little bit more flirtatious, a little bit more uh, of a human, of a character to add expression. 
So you want to pull off as much expression as possible before putting in the pupils and the iris. Write that back to me. Really, really big lesson from today. Uh, because it means that once you do bring in the iris and the pupil, you're not only depending on it. That's one big thing. So we do, we bring it, we delay the iris and the pupil because we don't want to depend on them and because we're going to end up picking up the slack in every other feature, which is going to result in a higher skill level because it means you're thinking about volume and everything else. The skin tone I use for the lower eyelid, I use for the upper eyelid. There's no reason to exchange or move around skin tones if you don't need to. Don't do patches of skin randomly floating around for no reason. Then there's the mouth. The mouth you painted has no volume on it at all. Um, so I'm going to get rid of that upper outline you have at the top and throw a shadow on the lower half of the upper lip. Throw a, a light on the upper half of the lower lip and a shadow on the lower half of the lower lip. Just, I just, everybody just slow down and just look at what just happened. Two blocks of value. One, two. Light, dark, light, dark. And the lips look extremely three-dimensional. Just just two blocks of value. Four blocks altogether. Two blocks of value per lip. Alright? Just focus, focus. Just stop. You know, you can spend an hour watching this video and focus on it just for your benefit as an artist. Look before after. Pure volume. That's because we cast a core shadow. A core shadow comes off the cylinder from the top down light. A cylinder goes for each lip. That's geometric anatomy. That's finding the geometric equivalent of the anatomy so that you can pull off better anatomy. That's why I call it geometric anatomy. It's a shitty name, but it works. All right, a shadow for the lower eye, for the lower eyelid. I took off my glasses. It was so dramatic now. Um, and there's a shadow for the upper eye and a shadow coming off this. All right. And if she's smiling, we need a little bit more radial shade. And that means that we're just over blending the corners of the mouth so they radiate out. We're going to blend now. Now there's a lot of blending. We blocked a lot. Now we blend. We're going to blend the two blocks for each lip, but we're not going to blend the lips together, obviously. Lips, an over-blended lip is a well-blended lip because it's just um, very mushy. It's a non, it's a non-bony, non-edgy thing. Don't know why uh, her mouth is that bright. The mouth is a cavity. It's a dark spot. It needs to be darkened. Um, if there is a tooth in there that you want to show off, you can show off a slight little value uh, moving upward just like that in one section of the mouth. Alright, so let's bring back these pupils, this the stylized iris, whatever it is, and we're gonna let her eye move all the way over because if she's looking this way, again this is good photography, if she's looking this way, her body's looking that way. So you have two angles now of movement. Right, which makes her look again more to the character that you're that you're trying to design this flirtatious elf nymph thing. And imagine more of a squint. Imagine more movement with the eyebrows. Imagine, um, you know, just more of every other unit of expression, wherever you can afford it. So sorry about my table. Okay, so you guys can tell the difference. Before, your eyes were doing this whole other wonky donkey. I don't even know what the heck that was. Ask a real question. Ask the real questions. What is she doing? What am I trying to express with this character? You can make her eye look even more that way. You see how much more intriguing a character she is. And we can afford to kind of break some rules with the eyes here. Just because it's hybrid-ish anime realism. Look at that. 
I kept the eyes the same. I didn't do anything else. And that waterline, that overdone waterline you did, I can introduce it now with a slightly lighter value. Bring in some of that light on the waterline. Yeah, a look, she looks more playful. Good, good uh, word to describe her. And then whenever it comes to the corner of the eyes, you guys have no idea what to do, so you throw a big shadow there. You just have to break it off at the brow bone. You don't have to overdo the eye shadow every time to hide something you don't know how to draw, to hide the corner of the eye. Just break it down, break it down into its parts, or the planes of the eye. That's For every brush stroke is a plane. Write that back to me. So you don't have to freak out and throw eyeshadow everywhere that, that you don't know, you know, that you don't know anatomy. If you find yourself doing that, you know that's a signal to do a study in that particular area. As long as soft brush was pulled out, as long as your makeup brush was pulled out, you know that, you know, there's something wrong there, some anxiety that 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 called that summoned forth using a pentagram in the ground, the soft brush that that does not answer all your problems. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm applying those beauty standards, which is a dark, um, this is actual makeup now, and that's on the lash line where it's warranted. Mm -hmm. And then a couple more shadows here and there. I'm going to start using soft brush on a separate layer. I only want soft brush, um, you know, just the speed that I work in with it for critique hour, but I'm going to delete with a slightly less soft brush, slightly less evil brush. Okay. So what's happening in the painting, which I'll take care of in a second, is that half the painting is dark. Um, before I do that, there's a little bit more makeup that's needed. So the inner corner of the eye is brighter. It's bright for a lot of reasons. Makeup, the skin there is brighter, um, it's wet there. There's a lot of reasons why this area here is is bright, but it just needs to be bright. There's too many reasons to make it bright, not enough reasons not to brighten it. And then from a distance, I'm grabbing this value. I'm zooming out and I'm applying that whitish skin tone color everywhere where the light touches. Even on the eyeball. This is how you unify the painting. I'm going to soften that Cupid's bow. And just overblend the mouth even more. And I'm going to get that skin tone with a large brush and just throw in some corner shadows with a large brush, soft, soft press on the corner of the mouth. That that really makes the mouth look more realistic because it feels like a natural smile. I'm going to overblend the lower eyelid a little bit just because it, I don't want it to look like a mechanical attachment but more like a natural organic attachment. And I'm going to brighten that waterline. I really feel like it needs to be brighter still. I'm going to get a lighter tone for it. Oops. The water line is tricky because it's not supposed to be bright all the way around. It's only bright where the light hits it. So I darken the start of it and the end of it. And again, just over smudge the rest. And on the upper eyelid. I'm going to get some of that white, that natural diffused white, and use it everywhere where the light touches just to unify the skin tone. That's how you make skin look realistic. You use the same color all the way through for the highlight. Highlighter highlights, you know, not like the lighter skin tone. We're talking about the sun's actual value or the light source's actual value. I'm going to throw in a shadow of the chin just to add to that cherub-like face. And then on the far eye, I'm going to start darkening using universal values. So that purple 
that we find everywhere, that's going to darken the far half. I'm going to blend at the skin a little bit more. And then wherever the lips end, sort of, that's where I'm going to have the darkest red just sit in there. And I'm going to blend that out. I mean, you can do whatever you want. This is the kind of style that I would apply to a cutie character. You have your own positions, you know, where you guys come from. It could be more anime leaning. It could be actual anime. Um, I don't recommend that. You guys know me. never recommend it. So I'm just stacking the space of the face behind the mouth on purpose, just so I can have an edge. And then I'll balance it back. And then I'm going to blend out the body. There needs to be a little indicator for the far corner of the, um, of the, of the mouth. Just a small little indicator where that far corner is. And I blend it out while I'm doing it. Or else it's just a side view mouth. We need that far corner. I'm going to smudge, I'm going to blur out the eyes. I'm going to leave the eyes the way you design them because I'm trying to honor the artist's decisions. But I'm going to blur them out because that's really going to help. And then if you remember that universal yellowish white I chose? I'm going to use that to kind of throw it over the eyes as well. I need to flip the canvas soon. The nose that you drew looks also mechanical. You want to just blend out the seam so it looks natural. And that's it. Everything else is actually pretty well done for the nose. You did a pretty good job on the nose. You just need to blend better. There's also something else you can do for the cheek, which is give it more of like a shape for the cheeks, just like that. Which I think adds to her cuteness. I don't want to give her too much of a duck lip. And then we're zooming out and blending. This is just my smudging brush. We're just blending all of these areas here. I feel uncomfortable giving her these big boobs, even, even though she's got like a baby face, but we've seen it before. And then on a new layer, I'm going to start applying some patterns for the hair. Nothing extreme, just, just some extra flow on the hair. Don't want to throw off the perspective though at the same time. Okay, so checking in with my reference. We do have a bit of a torso bend there. And the far shoulder is still behind, which is good, but I'm going to try to make it a sharper placement. and then darken it accordingly. I'm just going to increase the area here. Alright, and I feel like Showing a little bit more of the shoulder. So just a, a bit more perspective applied. Um, I think I will ease up on the breast shape. I just wanted a more pronounced symmetry line. But I think that'll do. And the rest is just smudged. We smudge anywhere where we have an organic curvature. Which means cylinders, spheres, um, anywhere we have flesh. just gonna throw that. I mean you could throw the hair right over there, you know. And there's no rule for where hair goes. It just kind of goes anywhere it wants. You can throw it here, which I think looks a bit more cute. And then I would throw in a second little strand just so I have an excuse to cast a shadow. 
Cash shadows are the best. select and then and then for the cast shadow it's really very simple we just get a soft brush skin tone soft brush skin tone I'm just gonna I'm just gonna you kind of have to fake a lot of it I'm, I'm telling you right now a cast shadow is, is for the most parts a faked entity in your paintings but we still we still try to push um, as much realism as we can in their behavior in our paintings. Alright, so it gets sharper the closer it gets to the surface that's casting it. The hair and the, and, the, and the face are closer together, therefore the cast shadow is sharper. The further it gets, the fuzzier it gets. And you can do this a thousand more times, as many strands as you want, just don't throw off the focus. Alright, so the body, in this case, it feels a little bit crunched. Um, but I'm running out of time. I, there's a lot I could do, a lot more I want to do, but I'm just going to do what I can in the amount left. And that's just for the bounce light for the darker half. So I'm going to darken the far half of the painting <coughs> and try to... Uh, do something that, that kind of saves that darker half of the painting. And by the way, when we talk about monetization on my channel, YouTube demonetizes every single video where I have a character that is wearing a bra or wearing some kind of, um, like well, anytime I have a female character that's showing a little bit of anatomy, it's demonetized instantly. Even though it's, it's it's designated as not safe for children or, you know, it's not like I'm drawing nudes here, but it's so unfair. Okay, so I'm casting a shadow for that far piece. And um, it, one boob will be in front of the other. See this angle? One is here, one is up there. So I'm not so worried about that perspective being thrown off. It's kind of the only thing saving the piece, um, the perspective. I'm gonna, I am gonna cast a shadow outside of my reference just because instinctively I want to darken things towards the dark half of the painting. And then it's just getting darker the closer it gets to the face. <clears throat> Deselect, put it under the hair strand and just blend that away. There should be something else that the character is doing, but again, for lack of time, I can't really explore every option. I wish I could. I'm going to clean up some of the silhouette. Select inverse. And just uh, try to get some basic, like, organization to what's happening in the hair. Don't want it to throw off the focal point. And I'm going to leave the body as it is. I, I don't have time to fix it. And if I allow myself to, I will fiddle with this for the rest of the, for the, rest of the critique hour. Um, I hope I gave you a basic idea of what you need to do with the, with the torso. You are throwing like a weird little bra thing on it. Um, now that I have everything deselected, I think it'll look a little bit more relaxed if I bring down the head away from the neck. Even though the neck is not showing, it shouldn't be that compressed. I'm trying to work at lightning speed right now. So I'm releasing some of the shoulder, which looks a lot better. Which in the reference, a lot of the shoulder is released. I just didn't re read the reference, right, because the hair is in the way. And now my pen pressure is gone. Stupid windows. Okay. Tucking. 
that arm back. That looks like a nipple. And I believe the torso is in front. Or is the booby in front of the torso? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. Okay, now for some fun lighting stuff. Tiny amount of bounce light on this arm. Okay. So we have, oh, now that I'm zoomed out, I can see. See what I mean? See how long, see how, see how I'll just fiddle with it until the end of time. And even though I'm running out of time and I actually have no time left. Um, just wanted to finish classes before sundown because there's a lot of moving left to do. We finally finished the living room. Super hella excited about it, and I wanted to get stuff and move stuff in while we still had daylight. But it's okay, it's just critique hour and it's more important. I mean, it's just moving and critique hour is more important. Um, so, new layer, I'm casting a shadow. Like, I'm really darkening this part of the canvas, like, really going for it. And I'm going to darken the lower half of the canvas as well. And feel free to bring in a color. Like, I would go for some, like, fuchsia. Madness. And this is how you could save that darker half, just with some basic bounce light. Nothing intense, really. Just anything that'll help you kind of identify anywhere where we have a loss of volume because of shadows. And this is something every single... I'm going to say it. I'm going to say the word. Cheap anime pinup artist does. It's, it's, it's just a quick trick. It's a valid trick. It's used in photography. When you have lost a lot of volume because of a shadow, you bring in a secondary um, to help you gain some of it back. But it's a cheap trick if you're using it to save your painting and add flash every time. But yeah, it's a cheap trick, period. But it's it's fun, right? Oh, look at the fl oh, look at the flash. Oh, I can't wait to get this to this part of the painting. Hmm, let me skip every fundamental just so I can get to the f to the to the flashy highlights. Just so I can get to this fun stuff, let me skip every freaking fundamental that will save my drawing. Even if they're a good artist, they'll skip them because they think, oh, it'll save them. And, of course, people will pay. But it's used everywhere. It's a valid tool. It's used in photography. And I don't want to skip it. I don't want to completely write it off. It's just lighting. It's, it's like a, it's, it's, it's innocent. It's not really its fault that it's being overused, but it is overused nonetheless. But in this case, we are using it a little more class, which means we are erasing. We're laying down a big clunk of it, and we're erasing and we're building it up. And that's what we're using here to kind of reignite a lot of the volume. Where is the Let me lower part of the boobs right there. <coughs> okay, and then some on the hair. So yeah, I said it, I said it, I said it's, it's cheap. It's cheap. Anyone who depends on the tricks and the flash and, 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 the, and the flashing lights is cheap as well. Alright, be a little bit more finesse about it. Look up what it actually does. Use a little bit. Make sure your room is dark enough so that little bit makes an impact. So I'm going to throw a quick little shadow there. And um, and that you're not being a cheapo about it. So this, these eyes, hopefully they are of a, of a living creature and not a zombie, they'll reflect some of that light, like the really sharp kind of placement. This one not so much. But this one will get some. Really important that this one gets them. Alright, this part of the gem should get some. I'll use a polygonal lasso. All right, we're almost done, I promise. I just wanted to give you guys a nice class because I skipped last week. Okay, there's a lot more we can do with the, with the face, with the expression, with this, with that. Um, we can, I mean, we've done it so mildly that if we duplicate this extra highlight layer, it'll, it'll still look good. But do you see how you didn't need it? It still did its job. It still did its purpose. I'm even going to bring this down to like 50%. Yeah, it, the, I do have to admit, Key Looper says that um, it's fun doing the lighting. It is, it is, no, no, no doubt. But it's not successful when it's done without any kind of class or 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 
a good plate of, and by class I'm just saying that, you know, you need to have a good idea of the fundamentals before you start having fun with these. Um, I think the boobs do this kind of highlight, actually. Okay, so a little bit better photography, a little bit more pin-up fundamentals used. A little bit more better photography. <laughs> A little bit less better grammar. I'm not going to emphasize the cleavage just because her face is cute. I don't, I just don't feel like that. that's cool to like mix cute with sex. I think that's kind of creepy, which is one big thing I hate about anime, <laughs> to reiterate. They're always mixing cute and sexy. It's kind of pedo. Um, but yeah, I'm going to throw in a little bit more hair strands here and there. Nothing intense because guess what happens to these hair strands? They get blurred out because I don't want them to contest the detail up there. And then feel free to add any kind of detail you want. We do need neck detail, collarbone detail. I'm going to call it a day and um, show you the before and after. Before I do that, I want to show you how much more we can do with the face because it's boring. We don't have pupils in an iris, so we can do a little bit more with the eyes. Kind of looks like Doja Cat now. Just so that we're, we're making up for what we lost in the pupils and the iris. and Which is, uh, we're keeping it for a reason because it, it looks cool. I like it. I like that weird dead look in the pupils and the iris when there's no detail. And I kind of want to keep what the artist had intended in style even though they have no business thinking about style. But you see that extra little squint? Okay, and then that plus the added smile. Before, look at the face. Before, after. Just a touch more expression to make up for our lack of everything else. Um, I would do a couple more tricks here and there just to finish it off. I would blur the lower half of the canvas. I would bring in some kind of, I would, I would try to, you know, render uh, the, the thing you were going for there with the, with that leaf bra and then try to bring in something else as well. This far part of the hair is a little bit too, um, light and then you can always go for tricks. Again, these are all just tricks. A dark upper half to the canvas which looks really cool and mysterious. But this is lighting. Alright? This is lighting. It's, 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 you know, it's fun. And you see how her head, her head is off-center? That's because it's all about her boobs. This is a pinup. So you need to focus a little bit more on the boobs or bring the entire piece down here if you want it to be about the character. All right, but I'm not going to focus on the boobs. It's not about that. It's a bit more about staging and all that goodness. Good hearty, good stuff. Before, <clears throat> no perspective, boring. The eyes were, were melting like a Salvador Dali painting because you were not applying stacking, you were, you melt, it looked like her, her eye, the water lines were, were sagging down. That's because you're not doing enough traceover diagrams. After, more perspective applied, the head is now above the body, the camera is looking down at the character. There is a lot of work left to do. I really, really want to do it, but I, I can't, I have to go. Okay, but you've got a lot of stuff that you need to apply here. You've got, um, the, the, the bra, which you need to make sure is in perspective for the far bra because we can see the leaf. And I would like add some kind of interesting little design here. Uh, you need the collarbone. Um, I recommend something with the hand. Maybe she's, she's holding something. I'm not sure what she would be holding. She's playful, so she's got something the character or the, the looker wants. 
Okay, um, then we've got maybe a couple more hair strands. This is what I do with my illustrations. I just kind of free ball it. Um, whenever I, I, I feel like I don't know what the hell to add to my paintings, I just kind of sit there and sketch away on top of it with a white line. It's, it's like a, I'm not taking you seriously white, you know, like it's just a really cool, clean way to bring in some interesting additional stuff without having to commit to it and actually start rendering it before I'm even ready. <clears throat> right, I'll try to show some of the neck because we can see that line of the neck. You see that in your reference? You can see the line of the neck right there. So that would be some fuchsia pink right there to show where the neck is. Okay, um, and that's it. All right, so trace over diagrams, exactly. Um, I don't know why I put her thumb in the wrong spot, but <laughs> I never said I was a hand uh, professional at hands and hand and handing professional, hand job professional. Um, so before, after, do you see how the face didn't feel organic because you didn't blend? It felt mechanic. Cool. All right. So to get Portrait Studio, if you want it. Um, it's available on my website, isabrak.com. It's great for referencing. A big update is coming up. It's currently at 50% off. It will stay at 50% off until we're all back to normal. I feel like the sale will go down very soon just because this is virus madness is going down. Critique Hour is going to get regular again and 50% off can't stay forever. Um, it's a very, um, we put a lot of work into Portrait Studio to developing it, to making it an easy uh, desktop program that is good for all computer types even though you're working with these high quality models that move it's a lot to do uh, and it's a 50 percent off but it won't stay like that forever probably very soon it'll go down I'm just I think I've had it on sale for a really long time long enough um, I am thinking about a price drop a general price drop um, it won't stay at 90 um, I believe that it needs eventually all, all all items all products eventually go down in price even Photoshop that used to be a thousand dollars has gone down to monthly charges like it's not reasonable to keep it at close to a hundred every time um, but it's not gonna be at 50% off uh, that kind of drop in the price <clears throat> so thank you guys for watching I'm sorry about last Thursday um, again, I, I would not cancel unless I really have to. I love doing critique hour. I will see you guys on the 23rd at 5 p.m. Eastern time if things allow. If I'm not going to have another water crisis, if I'm not going to have another issue with um, making it to class, if, if I'm not sick because I'm still fighting the virus. I'm still here fighting the virus, moving in and working on my house. Oh my god, it's a bunch of shit going crazy. And if you guys have ever been to Critique Hour, I've described in detail, I mean, uh, after hours, I've described in detail what exactly is happening in my life <clears throat> all the time. And um, it's, it's a lot to do and still make it to classes. But all private sessions are back in session and Critique Hour. And I'm going to try my absolute best and hardest to make it, uh, especially because everyone's home nowadays. And if you'd like to join as a patron, if you like today's class and you picked up a lot from today's class, go to isterback.com and click on the Patreon icon here. You can join as a dollar. Um, that's just $12 a year. And if everybody in the Reddit did it, um, then, uh, then we really wouldn't need to depend on anything else. I would never have to shorten my classes. If you want to submit your work for critique, I forgot about that as well, go to isterback.com and click on the Reddit icon here. Submit your work here. This is where I found the piece from today. Um, I just click on new and scroll down until I find something that is relevant to the session or relevant to the topic I covered today between all my classes, something I want to talk about, where you want to submit your 14-day challenges, you can submit them here. This is where I found this piece to critique today. Isterac.com, Reddit icon, stories here, and Patreon. Thank you everyone for coming. I'll see you guys. Bye.